Hi. Can you hear me? Hi, Roxana. I'm trying to get the new stream in the other. Hi. Guacamole. All right. I'm here. Trying to get the link to it so I can share it in the other group. I'm trying to get the link to it so I oh, can share it in the other group. I'm hearing myself. There. Great. This is going to be all on the replay. <laughs> share. Copy. In the other group. Here we go. There's the new stream. Okay. Hi. So I'm in my garage. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm going to cancel the other one, but I'm going to wait a few minutes because in case people are over there. Um, so I set up a live stream a couple days ago, and it automatically chose that I was going to be using a streaming software. I don't have streaming software. I have like a webcam. Um, so I, I just don't have streaming software. And after YouTube automatically chooses that for you, you can't change it back. So there was no way <laughs> that uh, I was going to be able to go live on that link because it was trying to force me to use a streaming software. You know, like gamers use the streaming software and stuff. Yay, I'm here. Yeah, so sorry about that. I have never experienced that before. It usually just selects webcam. Yeah, oh, YouTube. Mm. Oh, shucks. Anyway, so we're here, and I'm going to give people a couple of minutes um, to come over from the other stream. Um, this stream is no good. Please go to new link, flower friends. I'm not a fast typer. I am really a fast typer. That's a lie. Hi, 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 hi. Hello, Amy. Hi, Rose. Lila. Susan. Stephanie. I feel like romper room. I see Carrie. I see Randy. I see Brad. Hi. Hi, Owego. Owego, New York. Hello. Okay. So, hopefully, there are people here. Quebec. I love Quebec. I've never been, but I just feel like I love it. I learned a lot about Quebec in my years in French class. Teresa, you made it over. Hi, Nicole. Hi, flower friends. Okay. So basically, I wanted to, a lot of people are asking me about when I start my seeds. How do I figure out how I'm going to start my seeds? All of the above. So to make a video about seed starting, I don't know. It's about my, my calendar. It would be pretty much like sitting through a college lecture, and I don't want to do that because that's boring. So what I decided to do instead was to give you guys some of the tools that I use. So here are some of the tools that I use. Before I start, I have some notes so I don't forget anything. But I developed super scientific, super techie, not. So there's a couple of things in the description of this live stream and the live stream that didn't work. Uh, there's a Google spreadsheet. There's a Google Doc, and then there's also a link to a, a ping, like a, a this. So the way that I do is I get a calendar with the number of weeks on it. So like today is, what's today, the 20th? The weeks next to them. And I, I look at my dates as what week are we in. That just makes it super easy to look at. So the link to this, it's just a printable calendar is in the description. Uh, and then some other things are in the description as well. I'll be talking about all of those. Hello, 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 hello. Go Bills. Yeah. I was totally distracted during uh, the, the Bills game the other day because I was trying to do some work. And um, they were, I'm in the garage. So this is my garage. A couple snowmobiles, a four-wheeler. Uh, because my getting ready room, that's the room with the big flower picture. It's the lighting in there is really awful. And the last time I went live in there, I looked like a ghost like legit ghost. So I decided not to, to do that in the winter time because it gets dark here around five o'clock and uh, I have to use light and I look ghostly. So at least in my garage, I have some overhead lights. So here we are in my garage. 
this is where we spend a lot of time. It's got, there's a pellet stove going. We have a lot of stuff out here. We hang out here. It's kind of like a big family room. Anyway, so the way that I do all of my things is they're all in the description. And actually I can see if you're in them. So the Google Docs are live. So you'll be able to see, oh, I see people are in here. There are seven of you, Anonymous Leopard, Anonymous Kiwi, Anonymous Ibex, Anonymous Armadillo, and Anonymous, Anonymous Koala. You guys are all in the Google spreadsheet. So this is an example, and I, I, I'm sorry, I printed it out and this is how small it is. Can't even really see it. So, but this is an example of what the spreadsheet is. I have the name of the seed. I like to keep all, as much information as I can on the spreadsheet, days to ger germination, the temperature that it likes to germinate at weeks, what week of the year to start the seeds. And that is when I reference my calendar with the weeks of the year. I don't put dates down, start seeds on February 7th. No, I'll put start seeds on, okay, week six. So sometime during week six is when I'm going to start those seeds. So I'll also on this, there's more of you joining it right now. I have whether or not I use a soil block or a plug tray, whether or not I direct sow it, the spacing on the plants, what week do I plant it outside? Not what day, what week do I plant it outside? Because I don't like giving myself deadlines. <laughs> I like to have, you know, long time to do things. So if it's like a Monday and I'm like, I'm so tired today, I cannot plant that. That's okay. I have six other days in this week to get that plant into the ground. Okay, so... Days to bloom, because that's important. You want to know when you plant your seed, when you're going to have that flower. So days to bloom is on there. First bloom date, I go ahead and I'll calculate the days to bloom from the week that I start the seed. So say I start the seed in week 10, and there, the days to bloom on that is 90 to 100. So I know week 23, I should start seeing, seeing those blooms. Anyway, so there are a lot of... There's a lot of information that I have in here. I also have whether or not it's an annual or a perennial because my flower friend Gina and I, uh, we both made a couple of mistakes this year and we tilled up something that was a perennial. Uh, so, mer, mer. You're, not, it doesn't say who is who. Oh, there's over, there's, there's a few dozen of you guys in here now. Anyway, and then I, I say, when do I harvest this flower? So I, whatever flower it is. And guys, this is a short list because this is for you guys to do. So what you guys need to do, because you're not an editor on this Google Doc or spreadsheet, it is for you to make a copy of. So you can go up to file, make a copy, and then work on your own. So these first, this is all based on my last frost date. So you guys have to think about what your last frost date is and then calculate your weeks and your dates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is it that I murderated with the tiller? Fever few is something I um, tilled up this year that's a perennial here in my zone. And um, I murderated it, Lila. I murderated it. <laughs> and Gina actually, I don't know if she's on here tonight, but um, Gina killed a lot of things that were perennials for her. So it's just a reminder. Anyway, so you take this spreadsheet, you make a copy of it, you plug in your dates because um, everyone's going to have a different date. My last frost date is between May 15th, well, actually like May 10th and May 21st. I pick May 15th because that's a nice even number. I like it. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you guys use this. A recap of what, Tammy? This video? This video will be posted as a regular video. So, Melinda, the spreadsheet is, and uh, it'll pop up as a spreadsheet, you have to go to the file, make a copy, and then you can edit it. You can't edit mine, can't edit mine, <laughs> but you can edit your own. And I was just working on this today. The best part about this, the best part, you only have to do this once. You do this once, and then it's there for you next year. So say you start maybe five or six new seeds next year that you've never tried. All you have to do is add them to this spreadsheet. My favorite part about the spreadsheet is the control F feature <laughs> because, oh, uh, what does it say about Celosia? I don't remember because I call it Celosia because it's fancy. Celosia, oh my gosh, how many days to bloom? What week am I expecting those blooms? Control F means find. You type in Celosia and it pops right up for you. So I will have probably 200 items on this spreadsheet by the time that I'm done because I'm crazy and I ordered that many seeds. But 
this is what I'm going to be doing for the next like six weeks is every day I'll do 10 or 15 of them, plug them in. Uh, obviously some that I know that need to be done soon. Cause I'm coming up. Let's see what we're in week three in January or in um, the year. And so look, it says, if you're looking at the spreadsheet, I'm going to be starting something in week four. So I need to be on top of this. Hi, Christina. Yeah. So the other thing that I shared is a Google doc and that is the cheat sheet. Of course I had to put my logo on it anyway. So this is my cheat sheet. And so this will say, I started with week five because I'm not starting anything earlier than that, but five, six, seven, eight, and then I will type it. I'm, you can handwrite it if you want it, which is the best thing about these things. You can print them out and handwrite it. Week five, what do I start that week? So if you don't want to go to the big old thing with Bobber, you can put this on your refrigerator or down by your, by your seeds where you start them and just have a list of what you're starting that week. So week five, type in all the things you're starting that week. There's also a little section for direct sow. What am I starting as a seedling? What am I direct sowing this week? What am I starting as a seedling? What am I direct sowing this week? So this is what I'm going to keep downstairs in my basement telling me, oh, it's week eight. What do I have to do this week? So, and I'm a huge fan of writing things down in notebooks. There's something about pen and paper getting away from the screens. I'm on the machines all day long. I hate to be in front of a computer. You wouldn't know it, but I do. I spend hours editing and hours doing all this stuff on the internet, but um, I love having it on pen and paper and I do a lot of that, but I always make sure that I transfer it into an Excel, spree, Excel spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet, a Google doc, only because I've learned my, my mistakes. I will bring that notebook with me everywhere, that pen and paper, and I've left it out in the rain before have no idea what's in my first row of peonies because it got rain on it. So having it in a document like this and Lila, Lila, will you share with us your design program that you use? So Lila has a design program that, uh, <laughs> what's it called? Where's Veda? Veda's in here. Hi Veda. I thought she's in her room right now. N Notion. Okay. So Lila uses this design software called Notion. Is that free or do you pay for that? Whatever you sent me the video of, I think it's Notion. So it's something that you can use to kind of design the layout of your space as well. That's not what I'm talking about today. But if you guys are looking for something like that, <laughs> if you guys are looking for something like that, Notion, and what's the other one you said, SketchUp? Yes, I like saying that because it's like ketchup. So Notion is free. So anyway, there's a lot of software you can use for um, doing that. Okay, all right. So let me look at my notes because I have notes. And I'm. why would I make notes if I wasn't going to reference them? That's a work document. That's not my notes. <laughs> ah, here are my notes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So a lot of you guys ordered from Geo this year. What is, okay, Geo is amazing. This is not a dig at Geo, but what's the worst part about ordering from Geo besides not knowing what's what? What's the worst part? That's the worst part. It's and what's the best thing about ordering from Johnny's? <laughs> Johnny's tells you every little thing you could absolutely want to know about the flowers. This is one of my bags of cool flowers. This is in my refrigerator. I took it out. Okay. The blank packet is the worst part about ordering from Geo. So, but Johnny's is so amazing. Did you guys get the catalog in the mail? Did you get it? Okay. Even if you didn't. Yeah, Geo is blank. Oh, I see shocked faces. There's no information on the packet. None. None. Well, I mean, it tells you what it is. This is the front of it. It tells you what it is and what color it is and how many are there and like the lot number. That's it. No information. So Johnny's catalog 
and as you know, their website too, of course. But Johnny's catalog has all of the information for any flower all along the bottom. It tells you, if you look at my spreadsheet, that's basically it. So what I'm doing is even if I bought the seed from Geo, I bought all my zinnias from Geo. I am using Johnny's information and plugging it in. You have to have a hundred dollar minimum for Geo. What? I didn't know that. I mean, that's new. That's new. That's not. That's not normal because um, we. I not me personally because I only put in one order and it was well over a hundred dollars. But a lot of people put in small orders with them. Coffee break. Pardon. Okay. So when you get your geo seeds and you see that they're blank, use Johnny's as a reference. And if Johnny doesn't have the flower that you need the information for, use Google as a reference. All of these things have great, or cool flowers has a lot of this information on the cool flowers that you're didn't a lot like scabiosa, larkspur, dill. Uh, Lisa has a ton of information on in her book, clearly, and most of you guys have this already. Okay, and then, so let's take an example. Let's do an example. So stock, page page 186 in the Johnny's catalog. Okay, so stock is gorgeous, right? I've never successfully grown it. I'm trying it again. So I have the cats series. So all of the information that I need in here, I'm just pulling out of the Johnny's catalog and plugging into my, my thingamabobber right here. I'm looking at it like you can see it. It's my Google spreadsheet that's available in the description and it's free people, <laughs> no charge. It's so simple. This is something that everybody can do. All you have to do is take, it's like taking all the information from all the seed packets, you know, the Johnny's ones, and putting it all in one spot where you can just control F and find whatever information that you need. See, I thought so too, Gabriella. Uh, there wasn't a minimum. I, I, it seems though they're changing their policy right now because of the disaster. Oh, no. No, I've never seen a $100 minimum on Geo. How did I get the Johnny's catalog? I think because I've been a customer of theirs for like five or six years. Um, I didn't ask for it. They just sent it to me. There's probably a section on their website where you can request a catalog. And I just got it either yesterday or the day before. So it's new. It's not, um, it's not something that, you know, I got six weeks ago or something. I just got it this week. Okay, so I brought up stock because stock was discovered to be a cool flower after Lisa wrote the book. So I wanted to talk to you guys about cool flowers because, um, I'll, okay, so I took the course with Lisa, the flower farming, both, both the advanced and the regular. And the number one question that we saw every single time she did a Q&A was I'm confused about cool flowers. When do I start my seeds? When do I plant them out? Because in the cool flowers book, and most of you guys know it, is it'll say, I didn't practice this. <laughs> so it started six to eight weeks before planting out. So people were confused. Okay, is the planting out the day, like my last frost? Is it, what, when is it? I'm confused. So, hold on. See ya. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reading some of the comments. Okay. All right. So the cool flower debate. It's not really a debate. It's the debacle because people are confused. Okay. So. Cool flowers are aptly named because they can handle cold temperatures, some more than others. We have a serious list of cool flowers from Lisa in her book because she is the queen of the cool flowers. So I am able to, if you're looking at my spreadsheet right now, I'll, it'll, it'll be easier for you to understand this. So my last frost date is May 15th. We're calling that week 20 because it's the last day on week 19 and week 20 is a nice round number. So that's week 20. 
I can plant out, let's say, snapdragons, a cool flower, about four weeks before my last frost date because they can handle temperatures down into the teens. So I am going to plant out my snapdragons on week 16, four weeks before my last frost date. I need to start those seeds four to six weeks before week 16. So I'm actually going to start my snapdragons, if I look right here, week 12. And week 12, if I look at my calendar, is the week of March 21st. So I'm starting my snapdragons the week of March 21st, and I'm planting them out the week of April 18th. So people were confused about when the cool flowers actually go into the ground. Does that make sense to you guys? So it's not, don't start your seeds six to eight weeks before your last frost date. You start them six to eight weeks or four to six weeks before you plant them out. Does that make sense? Yeah, four to six weeks for snapdragons. I don't want them to get too big, Brampton Gardener. Week 12 is only four weeks because snapdragons, they recommend starting at four to six weeks before they go out. I do four weeks because I don't want them to get too leggy. If I did six weeks, they might get too leggy. When do you plant if you are in a zone that doesn't have a frost date? Um, I, Lester, I have no idea. If you don't get below 60 degrees, I don't recommend doing cool flowers. Cool flowers will thrive in temperatures below 60 degrees. They might not above 60. I do recommend you experiment though and try it out. Maybe you can do it in the fall. I would try doing cool flowers in the fall, Lester. No, I don't um, shave a few days off for soil, soil blocking at all. I can't read anything. Hello. I don't think you're, I don't think it's too late to start Lysianthus. I was starting Lysianthus about this time last year and I still got blooms. I only started them earlier this year because I wanted to have earlier blooms. Gonna have to go with uncool flowers, Jason. <laughs> um, Young Lee, I'm not sure about um, in a low tunnel but I am going to be using a low tunnel this year and I'm not changing any of my plans because I'm using a low tunnel. I'm using the same date structure. Paper crafting adventure. So if it says to plant four to six weeks before last frost rate, yes, that's exactly it. So only for cool flowers though. Don't do that with basil. If, if you are going to plant snapdragons or dill, stock, anything that you're planting out early, you want the seedling to be big enough to, yes, so four weeks before you plant them out, four to six weeks, whatever it says. Not everything is four to six weeks. Everything has a different, a different time. It says it in here. It says it in here. So with direct sowing though, with like Bupleurnum and Bells of Ireland, I'm going to be direct sowing those as soon as I can work the soil. So say early March, my snow is gone. Sometimes I have, I think for the past three years, we've gotten a snowstorm of up to three feet in the middle of April or in the middle of March. So snow is going to be gone and my ground is going to thaw because we've had, you know, 70, 70 degree days in March, we've had three feet of snow in March. So sometime in March, I'm going to be direct sowing my Bupleurum and my Bells of Ireland and some other things as well. Yes, Gardener's Workshop Farm. When you live in a warm climate, you need to pay attention to what gets too hot. Yes, Teresa, cool flowers uh, will not thrive well in hot temperatures. Okay, growing larkspur. Um, I would have to look up the specific details on larkspur. I think it's in here. But I don't wanna be boring. You're welcome. Oh, it's right here. Uh, Lisa recommends that you sow that direct, direct seed larkspur. 
So I wouldn't worry about starting anything else indoors about it. Sweet peas, yours fried, Roxana. So I had sweet peas from like late June until frost last year. That's shocking to me that yours fried because uh, we had a pretty hot summer. Will I list all the cool flowers on the list in that book? I don't know if Lisa would, I don't know if Lisa would appreciate me uh, reading her book to everybody. She has a lot of them on her website. I would recommend going to the Gardener's Workshop website. Um, she also did a couple of articles with Johnny's. If you Google Lisa Mason Ziegler, Johnny's Seeds, there are, she goes over a bunch of them on there. Um, but I don't, I don't want to, if I wrote a book, I wouldn't want someone to read it on a live stream on YouTube. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You had snow in May last year in Michigan, Jules. I'm not surprised. We had, we definitely had snow on uh, Mother's Day this, this last year. And on June 2nd, we had flurries in the air. We had flurries. Are there any wholesale seed sellers, Jennifer? Um, Geo and Johnny's. And the problem with Geo and Johnny, Hudson Valley Seed Company as well. Um, yes, Candace, I, you, I knew you didn't think of that. But yeah, I just don't want, I wouldn't want anyone to do that to me. So um, I was answering Jennifer <laughs> that there's an issue with seeds right now. So there are other seed companies that you can order from. I would recommend going to a smaller seed supplier because they're probably going to have more options for you at this point because they're less known, but everyone's going to Johnny's, everyone's going to Geo, everyone's going to Baker Creek, everyone's buying Floret seeds. Those are not wholesale, neither is Baker Creek. Kind of Johnny's sometimes is. You can get really good deals on Johnny's vegetables in large, I, like I buy their 250 tomato seed packets for almost like 70 cents more than just a packet. So it's crazy. Yeah. Johnny's has a lot of good, cool flower references. They, should, they work with uh, Lisa on that. Yeah. So she also has a lot of free workshops too on her website, Lisa Mason Ziegler. It's gardenersworkshop.com. Sorry, I'm reading. Hello, Indiana. Where am I located, Ellen? Upstate New York, zone 4B, in the middle of New York State. I'm four hours north. Thank you, thank you, Rochelle. I'm four hours north of New York City and four hours south of Canada. So I'm literally in the middle. What podcasts that are flower farm related? Um, I listen to a couple podcasts religiously. And the first one is the Slow Flowers podcast with Deborah Prinzing. Uh, all of her back, she started that in 2013, July, I believe. And um, all of her podcasts are available. I literally just Google it. I just Google Slow, Flo Slow Flowers Podcast. The first episode is episode 100. You know how when you get like a new checkbook, you never want to start with check number one? Well, she didn't want to start with episode number one. So her first episode is episode 100. So Google Slow Flowers Podcast episode 100. That will come up and you play it right from her website, I think it's deborahprinzing.com, but it, she might have transitioned to slow flowers. But anyway, so you start at episode 100. I recommend you start at episode 100 and make your way up all throughout the past seven years. Uh, yep, the no-till flowers, no flowers podcast, I have not listened to that yet, but I have heard good things about it. I recommend, oh, I highly recommend, Let's Grow Girls. It's a UK-based podcast, and uh, Nicole and Sarah are two lovely British ladies who are the hosts. They're hysterical. I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a guest coming up. I recorded with them, I think, New Year's Day. I think New Year's Day we had, um, we had a, a two-hour chat, and I love them. They're hysterical. They just had Charles Dowding on. Um, they just are really, really fun. Anyway, so Let's Grow Girls they just had this woman named Georgie on. I think she's in Sussex, England. She's actually Charles Dowding's neighbor. And she does the flowers. Charles does the veg. And uh, she was a trip. So that was a, that's this week's podcast. I just, watched, I just listened to it this morning on my way, um, on my commute. So it was really good. So let's grow girls. And they want, like, I don't know. People keep telling me to start a podcast. But I literally don't even have time to cook dinner. So... <laughs> That's, 
that's who knows. So yeah, so Nicole Beholden Blooms, she started a flower farmer page on Clubhouse. So Clubhouse is this new social media app where it's all like audio. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk on that. So Nicole invited me earlier this week, but it was like this, the day that I got the app and I had no idea what I was doing. So yeah, we're going to talk it. We're going to talk that. Yep. The flower podcast for sure. I love him. Hi, Cassandra. Yeah, Michelle, they're great. They're really funny. <laughs> you read Charles's book in an English accent. I was so terrified to go on this podcast with Nicole and Sarah because I do British accents all the time. And I was so worried that I was going to get on this podcast and I was going to start talking British. I really thought I was going to. I was so nervous. I, I held it in. I held it together. Anyway, Webster, New York. I know Webster, New York. Yeah, so Baker Creek is, wait, it's Wednesday. They were supposed to open back up today. It's not open. <gasps> mm. Hi, Jack. Jack, I hope you have great luck. You're quadrupling your veggie garden this year and planting flowers. Nice. You're going to love planting flowers. And it's so much easier than, than you think. Just put the seed in the ground. Give it a little water. Give it a little love and it'll grow. Yeah. I'm not surprised about Baker Creek. They go off and on. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm really, really bad with accents. I, I just, since I was a little wee baby, I've been doing it. Yes, we have similar weather to Canada. No, Nicole. Nicole, you're in Kansas, right? No, I always say Kansas. You're in Kentucky. Um, no, I don't think so. When's your last, when's your last frost date? I haven't started my sweet peas or my snapdragons yet. What are the best books? I actually have a video about all the books that I have for flower farming. Um, and I, I actually got some new ones too recently. Their site's up. Yes, Kentucky. I always say Kansas, Nicole. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't read anything. You talk like Pee Wee Herman? Pee Wee is a classic. Thank you. I did stratify well. The snow, it, it just, you know, surrounds you and it keeps you warm. Stratification at its best. Oh, really? Hmm. There you go. You did live in Kansas. Anyway. Let me, let me check my notes to see if there's anything else. Oh, well, I was going to do some, some, um, some seed calculations for like my calendar with you guys. Hold on. I have two laptops. I'm, I'm live streaming on this one and I'm here on this one. Okay. So let's, I have two bags. These are the bags that are stratifying in the refrigerator. Lots of stuff in here. Um, I already did Rebecca though, didn't I? I already did Rebecca. What are these? Zinnia. I already did Zinnia. So on my list already, if you guys get over to it, it's Snapdragon, Zinnia, Strawflower, Stock, Rebecca, Bupleurum, Bells of Ireland, um, Sea Holly, which is the Johnny's, and I'll do Gumfrina. So I'm using Johnny's book because I know there's Gumfrina in it, so I don't even have to look for my uh, seed packet. So one's page 175 in Johnny's new thingamabobber, the new catalog. I just cold stratify. The only thing I would, I know two bags. The only thing I would do like a wet stratify would be maybe lavender and rosemary. Rosemary is very difficult to germinate, but I don't do, listen, you can get into some pretty intense stratification methods. I will soak my sweet peas and my Baptisia. And I will scratch the surface of my Baptisia before I plant it. Um, Jonathan, I use just LED lights, shop lights. They're like 4K, 5,500 lumens or 6,000 lumens. Um, I did a video, I, I put the link. They're just Lowe's lights. They were like $30 a piece. 
and my thought process behind that, because there's this whole debate on the internet about grow lights versus LED versus shop lights, T8s, T12s, T5s. Um, T5s get too hot, I think. Um, but the seedlings are only under, for the most part, like Lysianthus, whatever, 14 weeks, I don't care. They're fine. Most seedlings are only under these grow lights for four to six weeks. I'm not growing things to flower and bloom in my basement. If that were the case, I would want one of the full spectrum lights because I need to bring that flower to, or bring that plant to flower and bloom. I don't need that. I just need to grow these to be four or five inches tall to transplant out into the open. So I don't really need it. Rose stratification. I don't know about rose stratification. Um, they usually ship to you when it's the correct time for planting. Hi. Oh, is, are there people in the other live stream? <laughs> so what's the difference between wet, cold, and wet stratification? So I'm doing cold stratification either in the frizz or, fridge or the freezer. Uh, you can do a wet stratification where you take the seeds out of the seed packet, have like a, a wet paper towel, put sprinkle some seeds in it, cover it with the other half of the wet paper towel, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then put it in the fridge. I did those with um, Venus flytraps. You have to stratify that for eight weeks. Venus flytraps are no joke. So anyway, you can do that with lavender. I linked in the stratification video, a video from MI Gardener. Luke from MI Gardener shows you exactly how to do a wet stratification. Some seeds like that, I don't think it's necessary. In fact, stratification itself, it really, I don't want to say it's not necessary because for some seeds it is, but it just increases germination for the seeds that say it does. So it's a, it's beneficial, but it's not detrimental unless it's like lavender. So how many shelves of grow lights do I have? I have three full sets, but I have four. <laughs> I have four sets of shelves. I only have lights on three of those shelves. Oh, you're starting roses from seed. Ah, oh, I don't know that answer. Echinacea. I think that's on my list. I think echinacea is on my list. Hi, Sunflower Steve. You were below zero this morning. Bottom heat on Baptisia. Thank you for that. Steve, when do you think I should start those? Like four, four weeks before I plant them out? Anyway. Hi, Brandy. Okay. All right. All right. Reading through, reading through, reading through, reading through, reading through. Do I need to plant them all at once? No, no you can store them in the fridge. I just put the whole seed packet in the fridge. Yes. Okay. I don't do any winter sowing in milk jugs. No, I have too much other stuff going on. Nope. I just don't. Okay. Am I near Holiday Valley Ski Resort? No. <laughs> I planted a bunch of daffodil bulbs that didn't do in the fridge or cool. Just stuck them in the garage. Um, I don't, I'm not sure on that because I'm assuming a daffodil is the same way. It needs a certain number of cool hours and 48 to 52. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's sufficient. I would Google cold stratification daffodil because that will tell you. I have never grown tulips in pots and that gets into like another sticky situation. Like in New York state, I do not need a nursery license to, to sell cut flowers. But if I put a tulip in a pot and sold that pot with the dirt and the tulips to a customer, I need a license for that. So I have not sold anything in pots. All right. I don't know what I would do without Google. <laughs> Google has been my best friend for 15 years. That's literally. Question. If you don't use all the seeds that were stratified, can you use next year? Store it outside the fridge. Um, I do. The only thing I kept in my refrigerator all year long were sweet peas. 
So the sweet peas that I'm growing this year have been in my fridge since last year. Right, wrong. Anyway, Gumfrina. <laughs> so I'm, at, I'm on my Google document, Google spreadsheet, so sorry. So Gumfrina, Johnny's is wonderful to have all the information that I need. So I'm just transferring this to my spreadsheet so that I have it at arm's reach whenever I want it. Germination is five to 14 days and it's transplant. So six to eight weeks before last frost. So I am going to start the seeds six to eight weeks before my last frost. I'm gonna do six weeks because I don't want it to get leggy. My last frost is week 20. So I'm gonna sow them in week 14. So I'm gonna write week 14. And remember, I for those of you just joining us, in the description of this live stream, there are links to Google Documents and Google Spreadsheets that I'm using to create um, my plan for when I'm going to plant anything and stuff like that. And then you can take the columns. So the way that you use these, you can't edit them because they're mine. But you can make a copy of the spreadsheet or the document and then edit it on your own. So change your numbers and stuff like that. I'm just adding to the list to show people live because they can watch me make these changes. Um, and then this is the calendar that I use. It's a calendar that number the weeks of the year one through 52. And I go by weeks of the year. I don't go by dates. So week 20 is my last frost date. Week 14 is when I'm going to start my gumfrina. So it doesn't have to be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. It could be any day during that week. That's when I'm going to do it. So am I going to do gumfrina in soil blocks? Heck yes, I am because I did that last year and it worked great. You know what else I did last year with my Gumfrina? I did the method that I did with my Lysianthus where I just put them, sprinkled them on a tray. I literally didn't even bump them up to anything. I sprinkled them on a tray. It wasn't even a tray. It was a blue plastic mushroom container. You know those containers that you go buy a thing of mushrooms at the store, sliced and washed and ready to eat? It was the blue tray that you get the mushrooms in. I filled it with potting soil, sprinkled the gonfrina, like 40 of them grew in that tiny mushroom and I put them right into the ground and I got beautiful gonfrina. I did the same thing with my scabiosa and they were fine as well. Jonathan, I, um, my mother purchased my soil blocker for me as a Christmas gift from Lisa Mason Ziegler's website, gardenersworkshop.com. She did just get... Um, she did just get a new shipment in of soil blockers. She posted a picture. So I don't know. Yes, Amy, you need a grower's license to um, sell seedlings in New York state. Yes. I was talking with the ag department today. They have to schedule an inspection of my basement. <laughs> yes, Bella, keep your mushroom containers. I'm, I'm losing track of comments, but let me finish filling out this. I am not going to direct sow my gumfrina. Spacing on the gumfrina, six inches. When I'm going to plant outside after my first frost. So I write week 20 to 22 on here because um, my first frost. I, what that means is when we get closer to my last frost date. And this is why I don't like to say when it says to sow your seeds four to six weeks before your last frost date. I always choose four because... I never know if, oh my gosh, it looks like there's going to be a super late frost. I have to keep these seedlings in their containers for another week and a half or two weeks longer than I should. So I better end their blocks because they're little three quarter inch soil blocks. So I'd rather not keep them in there too long. Um, I don't want them to struggle at all when I transplant them. Days to bloom on Gumfrina, 85 to 100 days. So I'm filling out this Google spreadsheet. I see there's like 30 of you guys in here right now. First bloom so 85 to 100 so the way that i do that is i take my calculator and i'll take 85 days divide by seven so that's 12 weeks so if i'm planting them week 14 i can expect to see blooms on week 26 is when they will start it's an annual harvest that's the best thing about johnny's it tells you when to harvest too i believe florette seed packets do as well Okay, so full color, but not fully open. And then, oh, and then you can also put other sections on here, other lists. So if you want to dry something, make a, a dry flower column, and you can put yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, let me read. Hi, Melissa, you're here for the first time. Welcome. Welcome. 
Listen, Lila, there's lotion in my basement, okay? <laughs> Do you need special soil to put in a soil blocker? So there's debate about that. Um, some people successfully use ProMix. There is, in the Cool Flowers book, Lisa has... Um, Lisa has ingredients to make your own soil block mix. She also sells it pre-made on her website. The ingredients, like the, um, the whole list is actually free on her website. I don't mind sharing that with you guys because that's available free on her website. Um, but it's just like peat moss and uh, vermiculite and all that other compost. And you just mix it all together. Um, I used Vermont compost, Fort V, the first year that I did soil blocking. It performed fantastic. It has everything you need. I believe it has like mushroom compost. It just has so many great things. But um, to me, it got really expensive. So it, if you look it up, <laughs> it got real pricey real quick. So I'm, I'm using the Lambert soil. Well, it's just germination mix this year. I'm trying that out. That bag that you guys see in my videos that I propped up on my table downstairs when I was starting my Lysianthus and all that stuff, that bag was $8. The Vermont stuff is over like $30 a bag. So, and it's a small bag. The Lambert stuff's a large bag. The ProMix bales are $30-ish. So, and the ProMix bales are massive when compared to the Vermont Fort V. But I do have to say that I each bag was able to go a pretty long way. I mean, I, I did tens of thousands of seedlings last year. I think I went through six bags of Vermont V. And um, the only thing I used it for was soil blocking. I, I didn't use it for um, filling pots or anything like that because it was just too expensive to use to fill pots. There was no way I was doing that. Okay. They are selling fast. The soil blockers are selling fast. At least as I would suggest going to get one. Yes, save your toilet rolls, Bella. So I used, I've used toilet rolls before to start seeds. I've used um, milk cartons. So last year when pandemic first started and we were all quarantined to our, our homes and school was completely remote for everyone, like March, April, May, the school district here locally was sending food home every day, like breakfast and lunch. So we were getting at least four of those school pint lunch, like milk lunches, milk cartons, and I saved all of those. So downstairs I have, I, I rinsed them out, washed them. I have bags of these little baby milk <laughs> jugs and I actually sold my tomato seedlings in them last year. I also sold them in peat containers. I'm looking into the cow pots. Um, they're a little more expensive, but I, um, I don't plan on selling seeds. Uh, Carrie, I, I was able to purchase the Lambert. I, well, I talked about this in a video, but I, I, um, hooked up with a couple of other local nurseries and we bought it through Griffin. It's a, a big wholesale company. Um, Griffin, G R I F F I N Bella. That's yes. Um, I just was answering Carrie too. So hi Veda. You're so sweet. Yeah. There, there are people here. Um, inappropriate Lila. So uh, yeah, so Griffin only, I believe. Um, you have to have all that stuff. Mission accomplished, Steve. What did you say? Four weeks. Thank you. Four weeks before last frost is good on the map. Thank you, sunflower Steve. Um, how long are seeds storable? Then, um, okay, one question at a time. This is squirrel, squirrel. Um, that's debatable. I have seeds that are seven or eight years old that I have zero problem germinating. So I think it depends on, um, it depends on your storage conditions. If they get like muggy and humid, they're probably not gonna last as long. If they get too dry, they're not gonna last as long. Like happy medium, find a happy medium. I'm so sorry, Connie. Some, something happened bad. Something happened bad with that link. I should probably delete it. So vintage cooking corner. I'm going to delete that other link. I'm going to delete it. How do I delete it? Delete, 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 delete. Delete forever. God, I hope it's the right one. 
<laughs> Watch us all disappear. I understand that this is deleting permanently. Delete forever. Oh, we're still here. Okay, I deleted the right one. Okay. Um, Jack? I bought bat guano, so... <laughs> I have bat guano, not bird guano. Okay, so someone said, how do you use toilet paper rolls for... Um, I wish I had... Oh, wait. I don't. Sometimes I have one in here because I have a bunny rabbit in here, and um, don't think this is weird. She loves to eat the toilet paper rolls, so it's really good for their teeth and stuff. So um, when we have empty toilet paper rolls, if I'm not saving them for seeds... Rose. Rose is the name of my bunny rabbit. She's seven years old. She's over there behind me. She will chew them up and do their bunny thing and shred them up. So I thought maybe I'd have one down here, but no. So you take the toilet paper roll, you put it up like this and you fill it with dirt and then you sprinkle your seedlings in it like so. That's all. You just put it upright and put a bunch of them in a container together so that they're leaning on each other for support. That's how you do that. Oh, Bella, I was going to answer you. Um, you said you had a hard time finding ProMix. Call your local nursery. Call one of the greenhouses around. They might have extra that they'd be willing to sell you. That's how I got my first one last year. Yes, Misty Farm. Snapdragons can absolutely be spaced four inches apart. Yes. mine. Some of mine might have been three. <laughs> That's okay. PPC. Hi, PPC. Sorry, my, my thing just jumped. Um, the British po podcast that I mentioned earlier is Let's Grow Girls. I believe they changed the formal name of it to Growing Cut Flowers, Let's Grow Girls, because people were like, what are they growing? So they wanted to clarify, Growing Cut Flowers, Let's Grow Girls. But Sarah and Nicole, when I was on the podcast, which has not aired yet, I was Nicole number two. Brad Pitt's great. Brad Pitt just got in. He, um, he plowed the driveway this evening, and he turned the pellet stove on for me out here. Hey, Nicole, so what day approximately will snapdragons be ready to harvest? If we planted seeds on 321, they will bloom around 120 days. They should be blooming around 721. That is correct. That was my little Chris Farley. That is correct. I keep my seeds in the fridge. Yes, Mary, 10 years. I'm coming up on 10 years with some of my tomatoes, and I, I, I plant them every year. You found the Lamberts? Oh, at Leonard's. 23, well, see, Jan, mine Lambert is not a bale. Mine is a bag of loose soil. The bales are more compact, and they have, um, obviously, more material. So mine are bags, not bales of Lamberts, and those are the ones that I got for $8. There's only three likes on my video. <laughs> 12 year old seeds, yes. Land and sea. Yeah, I've never tried any of the, I use the Espoma fertilizer. I'll use Plantone. I'll use other stuff, but I don't know about using like their compost, like the land and sea. What does that just mean? What just happened? Start catching up. It's true, Sarah, the variety of seeds. Cue the Ace Ventura jokes. I have, I have a, I can't even talk about my obsession with Jim Carrey that started at a wee baby age. I just found out, oh, thank you. You are so sweet. Three years in a row voted funniest, right? Thank you, my dear. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep up. Kathy, my wildflower field um, was decimated by deer and drought. I got double deed. <laughs> have you ever had someone watch your seedlings when you go on vacation? Yes, I have. So last April, was it last April? No, it was two Aprils ago. Um, two Aprils ago. If you guys don't follow How's It Growing on YouTube, check it out, How's It Growing Go check her out. Love the page. Lots of flower stuff there too. So two Aprils ago, my sister-in-law is named April. I feel weird saying that. <laughs> There's only one April in my family. But two springs ago, we went on vacation to the Outer Banks 
I think. And I had my father-in-law come over every day to check my seedlings. He, I had the lights set up on timers, so he didn't have to mess with that. But um, wait, no, he did. He did have to mess with timers or with the lights because I didn't have my, um, my pink and red stupid fancy light. I didn't have that on a timer, so I had <laughs> he had to do that. But he was also here taking care of the dogs and the chickens and stuff, So um, and the rabbit and the cat. Just another thing, right? So he brilliantly took care of my seedlings. So thank you, Papa Pit. Sorry, I'm catching up. Veda, are you rolling your eyes at me in my Jim Carrey love? Fun fact, I had a full-size cutout cardboard of Liar Liar of Jim Carrey in my bedroom when I was in high school. My ex-boyfriend worked at the video store. It was the one that was like <laughs> on the... Um, on display at the video store for, you know, remember when Blockbuster existed? Remember that? Remember going to find a movie? Anyway, I had Liar Liar Jim, Jim Carrey cardboard cutout. Okay. Anyway, sorry if you already mentioned it, but are you getting totally mad props on a few different? No, from the Garden Answer Facebook. They keep posting my videos. I'm embarrassed. I'm not on there. Hi, Tabitha. Cool flower farm. Um, are they saying nice things, Janaya? People are, well, thank you, Don. Don just messaged me. Great live feed. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Um, yay, you love how's it growing. Good. Thank you for telling me that, but I hope they're not being mean because I, I can't. Garden answer groupie is not mean, right? <laughs> Yeah, Veda's, I didn't even know. Veda, are you, are you, you must be watching if you keep commenting. Veda's calling me insane. All right. Gosh darn pen is blue. <laughs> liar, liar. Oh. You had a Doctor Who cut out? Nice. Living on prayer. The pen is red. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Andre, my cousin Andre's on here. Honey, I don't have that anymore. Wouldn't that be fun? If it's a person's first year for a flower farm, how many different types of flowers would you recommend growing to not be completely overwhelmed? I can put my knowledge to good use because this morning I listened to the Let's Grow Girls podcast with Georgie and Georgie had touched upon this very subject and Georgie you have to go listen to it, but a brief summary of Georgie's uh, recommendations. And she, it's the common farm, I think, um, in Sussex, England, right down the road from Charles Dowding. She recommends if this is your first time growing and you want to have something to make a bouquet with, you grow three different ty types of fillers, three different types of focal flowers, and three different types of filler flowers. That's what she recommended, but she also recommended you do 333 for spring, 333 for summer. 333 three, three for fall. That's how you not get overwhelmed. And I just laughed because these are my seeds. <laughs> Plus this one. I laughed. There for my children. All right, hold on. I'm trying to read. The week thing, we're in week three, Tara. Tara Tara, Tara Tara, Tara Harper. Um, it just, it just, the week thing is taking the year and dividing it into 52 weeks, which the calendar does that for us, but it just tells you, all right, so we're in week three, next week's week four, and that's how I keep track of things. I, I do need to join the groupies page because I have, I've been watching Laura for probably three years now, but she's so sweet. What? The Florette Seed Sale Group? There's a Florette Seed Sale Group? Hi, Jeannie. I should be a member. Oh, that makes me so happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I'm trying to... So I... Um, you, Alaska Bloom fertilizing the dahlias. Um, I fertilized my... Listen, last year my dahlias were a, a total crap show. Let's just be honest. Um, so... I don't know if this is the best thing, but like 
like we know, there were drought issues, there were gull issues, disease issues, just issues. There was lots of issues. But um, I fertilized with Neptune's Harvest. It's the fish emulsion and seaweed. And I use my Ghostbusters backpack, Chapin four-gallon backpack sprayer. That's hysterical. <laughs> so I put it on my back and I spray them like a crazy person because it's a foliar feed. And uh, that's what I used. Whose baby was born on the, oh, your, ah, yes, Laura's new baby. Guys, listen, total accident that I posted a thumbnail of me cradling a baby squash literally the same hour that Laura posted the baby was born, that Samantha Grace was born. Holy cow. Can we talk about the fact that she's nine pounds, 14 ounces, and the cutest thing I have ever seen? Oh, my gosh. She's so adorable. Mom. Mom. My mom's on here now. Mom, it's lost, okay? It's lost. Okay, my mom is asking about the Escarole and Long Hots. Okay, story time. I ordered Escarole, Long Hots, um, some flowers, some more strawberry gonfrina, eucalyptus, um, and a couple of other things from Johnny's way back about two months ago. It's been stuck at the same post office in Maine since December 28th. <laughs> so I finally, uh, Lila had the same exact issue. She ordered the same time I did. And her order was also stuck at the same exact post office in Waterville, Maine. Anybody live there that could go to the post office and rifle through the packages for me? <laughs> it's the post office in Waterville, Maine. And it has my Johnny's package. So I ended up calling today USPS. They opened up an inquiry for me, but Lila did this the other day and she opened up an inquiry and uh, they magically found her package. And two days later it was in her mailbox. Yours too. They're just hanging out. Hi JS. Yeah, my, oh, that's true, Stacy. My dahlia seeds are in that package too. So my dahlia seeds, oh, Tabitha too, guys. Everyone's stuck in Waterville, Maine. <laughs> it's crazy. So I'm, I'm just picturing this small little post office in Waterville, Maine, and I don't know that it's small. I have no idea how big it is. It could be a giant, massive warehouse. I'm just picturing all of our packages on top of each other and it just be like total chaos. And I'm pretty sure the workers just walked out. <laughs> they just were like, nah, I'm done with this and just left. But I'm, I'm just joking. I can't imagine how overwhelmed everyone is right now. And so Lila called Johnny's and said, we're confident that your package will make it to you eventually. <laughs> so which is a bummer because it's a bummer for you guys because I was going to do two eucalyptus giveaways. I bought 500 baby blue eucalyptus seeds to do if I don't have the eucalyptus. So we might have to do something else. I don't know. I really wanted to do a giveaway. The Grinch is at the post office. The Grinch. Yeah, it is probably a sorting center. That's a good point. Yes, I had to call. No, Alicia, you don't have to call to do an inquiry. Um, I just wanted to talk to a person. I, I'm so tired of like putting in an inquiry on the internet and hoping someone gets it. So I called and I opted to get the call back to because they said my wait was over an hour. So um, I got the call back and about an hour and a half later, they called back and this wonderful woman named Anna, I spoke to her on the phone for five minutes. She opened up the inquiry and she goes, oh dear. Oh my. <laughs> she couldn't believe that it was at the same post office for so long. But it was. Yes, Roxana, I bought all the eucalyptus. No. They were out of everything except for the 500 pack of baby blue. So that's what I bought. Early April is when they said yes. 
I've I started my eucalyptus, Charlotte. I have all the no, I don't. The post office in Waterville, Maine has all the eucalyptus guys. <laughs> Oh, that's nice of you, Candace. You do a giveaway. Do one, Candace. See, and then Gina, my flower friend Gina just posted or just ordered something from Johnny's and she already got her package. She apparently sidestepped that post office in Maine. I'm going to fizz my water right now. Ready? I just made, Brad Pitt got me a soda stream for Christmas. Oh, that was such a gentle fizz. I think I must be running out of CO2. <gasps> Yikes. Word vendor one. Oh, hi. I see you. Do you have problems deciding if you ordered certain seeds or just dreamed it? <laughs> I actually have no idea what's in my seed box. That's why I'm making this list right now. Listen, if I get these seeds within the next few days, do you guys want me to do a giveaway? If I get them within the next week, should I do a giveaway? I don't know. Like, I don't know where you guys are, when you guys want to start them. Some of you guys are in, like, uh, you know, tropical regions that can't do it. Uh, Paige, it's, it's the same family of eucalyptus, and I believe they will get like that if they are allowed to grow that big, but... When you grow them for cut flowers, you cut off them and you don't allow them to. Sunflower Steve is texting me. Yes, yes, yeah. There must be some sort of delay on comments because I'm getting all these yes, 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 yes. I'm assuming you guys want a giveaway. Yeah, okay. All right, I will. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I will, I will. Reading away, reading away. Oh, okay, guys. I really want, how long, I don't even know what time it is. Oh my God, it's been an hour already. I want to show you guys something that literally made me cry like a baby this week. So one of my viewers, her name is Dorothy, and she lives in Oregon. I will cry probably right now. Oh my God. So she sent me something that she clearly has been working on for a very long time. And it came in this amazing tissue paper with like this on it, whatever. It's just, it says to my friend, Nicole, she had a handwritten note in here and I've been so like spoiled every, almost every day I'm getting like gifts in the mail with handwritten notes. But so she made me this scrapbook this is lavender from her garden. It smells like heaven. Inside here, there are seeds from her garden. So she said that I could wear a garden around my wrist all the time. And then there's little dragonfly charms, which dragonflies mean the world to me. I've talked about it a couple times. I don't really get into it because waterworks will happen, but um, dragonflies are super kind of important. Right? So Lila, it's not even it yet. So you open it up. And it has all of these she notes. There's some beautiful, beautiful sayings in here. One of the worst mistakes you can make as a gardener is to think you are in charge. It just, she typed that on here and put it in here. Okay, so it's full of this beautiful, beautiful stuff. And then I'm like going around, going around. And then I see, I gotta show you guys this because it says, where is Brad Pitt? I go, oh my God. So. I pull this out and I'm like, where is Brad Pitt? She printed Brad Pitt. <laughs> she printed Brad on this card. Isn't it so funny? Where is Brad Pitt? Oh my God, I was dying. And it's just, it's so, like every page is so beautiful. It's a, it says what the thrip on here. Won't you come to my garden? I want my roses to meet you. Everything, everything. She's postcards from the 1910s, a whole page dedicated to coffee. You know, I just, oh, this was my, my favorite, I believe. 
Okay, this is my favorite. I'm going to pretend that I wrote it, even though it's a garden proverb and I didn't. But pretend that I wrote this. Ready? There is life in the ground. When it is stirred, up it goes into the man who stirred it. That's it. Anyway, it, the whole entire book is amazing and beautiful. And look, she even, this is like, a, they're all little notes that I can send to people. She wax stamped my Nicole. There's an N on it. Dorothy, I don't know if you're watching, but <laughs> this is the most thoughtful, beautiful gift that I've ever received. And I'm going to cry. <laughs> anyway, beautiful. Where's my tissue? Anyway, it's beautiful. And this is what happens to me when people do things like that, that are absolutely unnecessary. Also, it smells really good because it's lavender from her garden. So Dorothy Hunt, you are on my Christmas card list. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let me open up my notes to see if there's anything else that I wanted to um, mention to you guys. Oh, so it's Sunflower Steve. Sunflower Steve knows how to make me stop crying. Thank you. <laughs> Steve is saying to everyone, thank you for everybody who comments on, on his videos. And um, he was just so overwhelmed about all of the, the love that you guys were giving for Sunflower Steve's sunflowers that, um, you know, I've been telling Steve for months, Steve, you got something special. <laughs> And uh, I just think that, you know, now he knows. I think he knew, but, you know, it's always nice to be affirmed. It, it is. So I'm excited. When you, Steve, when are my seeds coming in the mail next week? I don't take bribes. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. All right. Where are my notes? Not there. Oh, here. That's it. That's it. I think we're good. Steve has picked out a name, but Steve, um, Steve is likes a name, but also he's not sure what, you know, sometimes when you um, go with a company, sometimes they have marketing names that they, but, but Steve, Steve announced on video number four with Sunflower Steve that he has chosen something with serendipitous. So serendipitous sunflower. What? Steve says he sent my sunflower seeds to Maine. <laughs> oh. oh, really? Roxana from Soil and Margarita. She also has a YouTube. Um, Roxana says that writer, gardener guy, <laughs> Dr. Alan Armitage, um, ran out of books. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not. Yeah. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Who's here? Veda Pitt's coming out. You can, you can make an appearance. Make peekaboo. So, um, in my trailer, the one that I just posted, like the two and a half minute video that I posted. <laughs> so, a lot of people thought that the little clip of me, that I was in fourth grade, was Veda, but that was actually me. That was actually me. I'm still in the chat. She's wearing a banana shirt because she's a banana. All right, sorry, I'm trying to catch up. Get, get, go. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Russ. Sunflower seeds, sunflowers need to come to Australia. Agree. Bye, flower friends. Veda says bye, flower friends. Oh, Tara, thank you. <laughs> I understand. But once you start using the weeks, um, it just is a lot easier than dates. Andre, I love you. Is Steve starting a YouTube channel? No, but Steve is going to be on more videos with me. And, and I think we figured out a way to make it high def. We did. 
Armitage's wife is probably super happy. <laughs> Thank you. I think Veda is adorable too. She does have her braces off. Oh my gosh, there is a delay on here. Anyway, have I tried delphiniums? I have delphiniums to put into the ground. Okay. Oh, she's back in the comments. She's so fast. Anyway, look, there's a light shining on my head. <sighs> All right, well, I think I'm gonna probably take off. I'm gonna go inside and relax. I have to get up at, at the butt crack of dawn to go shoot a video. I was hired by a local school district to create a video to help them find their new superintendent. No pressure, no pressure. No, I didn't buy delphinium plugs, I have seeds. <gasps> Candace, super chat. Super chat, Candace. That's what you get. <laughs> Super chat. I was gonna do, and I want to say thank you to all my members. There's so many of you guys in here. I was gonna do a dance at the end of every video when I get new members, but then I, I didn't want to embarrass myself for, <laughs> for so long. Uh, anyway, so just to recap, in the description of this. I use aluminum pans. Yes. Oh gosh. Deeply intuitive. Deeply intuitive. Deeply intuitive. <laughs> so, um, in the description of this video, no, I don't get embarrassed at all. There is a Google spreadsheet that you can make a copy of and use it to fill out your own information. There's a Google doc that you can put what weeks you're going to start, which seeds. If you saw Laura from garden answer was briefly talked about her, um, gardening spreadsheet and she just uses post-it notes on the calendar. That's basically what this is. But instead of post-it notes on a calendar, you just have, oh, week five, this is what I'm starting. Week six, this is what I'm starting and all that stuff. Oh my gosh, Roxana, Roxana. <laughs> Roxana! <laughs> this is fun, I can't stop doing that. Anyway, good night, Monica. You're welcome. And um, also the calendar, um, there's so many things. It's right here. And that is a printable, it's a, a ping, I think, a, a, which is like a picture, a PNG file. Um, it's a free download. And also, because I have this too, um, I'm going to go through this. And I also have a column on um, my seed starting spreadsheet for like tips and tricks. So I'll go through Dr. A's book and anything that I see that would be super helpful, I'll go ahead and put that information in there so then I don't have to reference the reference book. I can reference my reference sheet, all the references. <gasps> Rachel, new member. Welcome, Rachel. How do you become a member? So I have two memberships. There's like a $1.99 membership is just a monthly thing where um, you get to have a little thing next to your name. Good night, Pam. You get to have a little emoji next to your name and it changes the longer you're a member. Month join, you just click that. That's the $1.99. There is a $4.99 a month option and that's for behind the scene photos that I post on members only posts. Um, but it's just fun. It's just like, it's just something fun to do, so. Yes, the spreadsheet is in the description of this video, the Oily Mama Tribe. It's in the description of this video. It's a Google spreadsheet. You cannot edit the one that I posted, but what you do is make a copy of it, and then you can edit it, okay? Thank you. Yes, that's a snowmobile, that's a snowmobile, that's a four-wheeler, and that's a bunny rabbit. <laughs> and do you see that trash can right there? There's a basketball hoop on it because we play basketball with our cans. Yes, we do. Whoop. I go that. Oh, Michelle. Wait, ready? Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Rachel, are you coffee, Rachel? You know what I'm talking about if you are. Michelle. <laughs> Bye, April. And you'll see my, my members are in green. 
it's just a nice way to support the channel. I appreciate it. it nothing will change if you're not a member. Nothing changes. But it's just a nice way. It's um, to support the channel and help me continue to make videos. Good night, Vanessa. Good night, Michelle. <laughs> All right. I am really going to leave now. You're, you're not Coffee Rachel? Okay. I can't remember Coffee Rachel's last name. I'll have to look it up. Jenkins? Good night, 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 good night. Okay, end stream. Bye, flower friends.